what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be going over the codable protocol a little bit in depth i've definitely gone over this before but i think it deserves a focused video plus you guys have been asking for it so uh, here we have a url pulled up uh, for some random api that returns sunrise and sunset times and we're going to be using the return json uh, in this in our codable example so that said, make sure you absolutely destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you hit subscribe while you're at it if you're new to the channel. Get excited, get Xcode ready, and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we've got Xcode opened up here. Let's see if we can get away with this video uh, in a playground. So I'm gonna create a playground. We can stick with the blank te template and I'm gonna go ahead and call this codable instead of using those default names. I feel like I always use those and I end up with a million Swift playground files. So cool, so let me expand this window to give ourselves a little more room to work and let's talk about codable. So to talk about Codable, I think a little bit of background is helpful. So over here, we still have the page open where we have this JSON coming back. So Codable is a protocol that allows us uh, as developers to take bytes that are returned uh, in a JSON format, give it to a JSON decoder object, and uh, we can supply a struct or a class that conforms to this Codable thing that we keep talking about. And if that class has the proper types and property names uh, and they match up with the JSON here, the actual one-to-one -one mapping of the data in JSON here is done for us. So it sounds pretty simple and it is, but I think the, the thing that folks that are starting off with iOS and Codable in more recent years don't appreciate is back in the day uh, before Swift was a thing and even now with Objective-C, when you get JSON data, you really have to do a lot of things like checking the type and checking if things are not nil. Uh, whereas with Codable, all of it is handled for you magically. So that's a bit of context behind it. Let's actually implement this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this URL that I pasted in here. Like I it said, it's returning sunrise and sunset times. I think this is all in UTC uh, time zone wise. The contents are irrelevant so long as we get data back. Feel free to use this URL as well. And we basically want to perform an API call to get the actual data out. So we're going to create a function and we're going to say get data. And we're going to create a URL string. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste that string in here. You can see that we provide uh, latitude and uh, longitude. We also provide a date. Uh, this is the, I guess, time zone or rather this is the sunset time that's gonna return for August 8th or August 1st rather. So we have a URL here. We then need to create a URL object from the string. So that gets created as an optional. So we're gonna open this constructor up and in guard. I'm gonna paste this guy in. And if we're not able to create a string out of it, we're just gonna return. And then after that, we can create a data task and a data task is how we perform actual API calls and networking tasks and we're going to do data task uh, with a URL and a completion. So the URL will be our URL and the completion as you can see by the signature here returns uh, three optional parameters so data, URL response, and error. We only care about the data and the error so we're gonna do underscore for discardable for the second parameter. Now in here, we're gonna say, we're gonna make sure the data is not nil. So data equals data. And we wanna make sure error is nil. Make sure we didn't hit an error. I feel like every time I say error, it sounds weird in these videos. Uh, but anyways, if, if we don't have data or we do hit a 
uh, issue or an error, we're gonna return out of it. And I'm gonna put in here a print starting, or let's just say got data. Let's print out the data. And we can print out the data like so, and then we can call uh, task dot resume, and that will actually kick off this uh, API call, this task, and it'll get started. Uh, resume is a misleading term. I've actually uh, filed the DTS with Apple, like a bug report, or rather a suggestion that they should change the name for this because it's super misleading in a lot of ways. But anyways, let's go ahead and run this. Whoops, we don't want to open that. We're going to pull up this console here, and I'm going to go ahead and press this run button. And uh, just kidding, we should probably call this function. That would be a fantastic idea. So let me pause this down here. Let's call this function. And let's hit run one more time. And we should get a bunch of things printed out here. Uh, rather, instead of a bunch of things, are one thing. So we're definitely getting data back. And the size of the data that we're getting back is 482 bytes. But that's not that useful, right? Like we want to get the data out of this. So here's where Codable comes in. So I'm going to copy the expected response. And I'm going to come down here. And we're going to paste that in here in a comment. Now, basically, let me close this bottom thing. We want to create a uh, object that is conforming to the Codable protocol that has the same keys. And we need to make sure that it's type, uh, rather case sensitive, and the types are properly accounted for. So let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is create a struct, and we'll call it, let's call it API response. We'll make it codable. And the top level keys in this JSON that's returned looks to be results and status. We're not going to use any of these as the top level keys because they're all sub of uh, the thing the result is pointing to. So we need two keys in here, results, and then we also need a status. Okay, so what are, what are the types now? So it looks like status is a string. So we're going to put string here. And results actually points to another dictionary uh, annotated by the fact that there's keys and values in here and we have these curly uh, braces. So what we need to do is create another object and I'm going to call it API response results. And this will be another struct and we'll make sure this one is codable as well. And now we want all of these in here. So I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste it. It looks like all the values are strings except for this guy right here for day length. So we'll deal with that one in a second. So go ahead and paste that in here and we're gonna hold down option and you can multi-line select. And it gives you multiple cursors too, pro tip. And we're gonna replace it with let. And we can go ahead and delete all the stuff on this side. So I guess we're gonna have to do this line by line but go ahead and delete that, delete that. These are all strings. So actually while you're deleting, you can go ahead and throw the type in there as well. We're gonna delete that. Be very careful that you're not deleting the actual part of the key. I've done that before. I wasted a lot of time trying to figure out what thing I accidentally typed incorrectly. Uh, it gives you decent errors. This was a while ago, but if you do make a mistake in your codable object, uh, it'll give you a pretty helpful error in terms of what you did wrong. Uh, for example, if you forget a particular key or if you have a typo, it'll tell you that it was expecting a particular key in your struct or your class and it didn't find it. And string. Okay, and then this one looks like it's an integer. Hopefully there's no uh, there's no uh, floating points, so it's not a double or a float or anything. So I think we'll be good to go if we just make it an int. And we also need to understand that we're not putting optional in front of any of these. You could, uh, if you have a case where one of these values might come back as nil, uh, by making them non-optional, you're telling the JSON decoder we're gonna use in a minute that every single property must exist in the returned response, otherwise it's not a valid response. So how do we actually convert uh, 482 bytes to this thing, right? How does that magic happen? So it's super simple. So we're gonna first create uh, a result that'll be the type that we want optional. And we're gonna put a do catch block here 
The reason we need this is because the decoder function can actually throw an error. So we're going to say JSON decoder, and we want this function to code. And notice the uh, the uh, two parameters it takes is the first thing is the thing that you want to decode to. So that's going to be our type dot self. And the next thing is going to be the data you want to decode from. And we're going to make that data. And we need to put a try here, like I mentioned, because we need to try to do it, it can throw. And if an error occurs, we're going to print out an error. We're going to say failed to decode with error like so. And now we should probably unwrap this because it's optional. Spell that correctly. We'll say final equals results, else we can return. And now let's print out some of our data. So let's actually, yeah, we'll type it again. We'll say print final results and let's see what stuff is in here. So results points to this thing. There's sunrise, sunset, and day length. Let's print out those three. Say sunrise, sunset, day length. So, uh, so yeah, that's that should be everything we need to do. So let's go ahead and hit Command K in here to clear that out. Hit pause, and let's hit run one more time. And if you look at that, instead of seeing our bytes, we actually see the data here. So let's go validate that this looks correct. So 2020, 801, 1732, 06, 06, 00. I feel like I spelt these incorrectly. These are both sunset. We want one of these to be sunrise. I think that's the order, right? Nope, sunrise comes first. That should kind of be obvious, my mistake. Let's try that one more time. Let me go ahead and clear this stuff out and run it once more. And okay, perfect. Now we have differing values. Let's go double check these. So the sunrise we should get back is 2020, 81, 141. 2020, 81, 141. So we're, we're definitely getting the correct data back uh, and we're decoding it. It's not being mocked or anything uh, for this video, but that's basically codable in a nutshell. Like I mentioned, uh, it's pretty simple. It's really the concept of uh, providing the keys and types types that uh, the decoder object can try to translate bytes to, right? So it takes the data and you're giving it this object and you're saying basically try to convert from this to this. And that's why you need to try because it may or may not succeed. And fun fact, if you command click into Codable, Codable is actually just a wrapper of code, uh, encodable and decodable. So if you're curious about what both of these protocols are uh, as their protocols themselves under the hood, you can definitely Google to Apple's documentation and take a look at some of the nitty gritty about it. It basically allows you to decode from bytes to the object or the inverse, which is uh, create bytes from the object. So in our example here, we basically took data, which is bytes, and we converted it into the struct, but we could also take the struct and convert it into data. Let's say we want to upload something, for example. So codable is just a fancy wrapper on top of uh, encodable and decodable, and it just aggregates the functionality of both together. So that's really it. That, that's really all there is to it. Dealing with JSON and Swift is amazingly easy. It's a huge deal. When Swift first came out, it was a huge deal when codable got added. Uh, I love it. You'll love it too. It's an essential part of every project, and that's kind of all I had for y'all. So if you haven't hit that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below if you have any questions, uh, suggestions, concerns, issues, et cetera. I try to reply pretty soon to each comment. If you haven't seen my memberships video, I have YouTube memberships rolled out now. So take a look at that if you're interested. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.